Hey folks, it's Norm Bergen here, taking you on an insider's tour of Jasper National Park. Today, I want to pay a special tribute to those veterans of World War I who were the recipients of the Victoria Cross for facing the enemy in battle. Jasper is home to five mountain peaks that recognize First World War soldiers who received the highest military decoration for valor in the British Commonwealth. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us would like to think that peace is simply the absence of war. It's rather unfortunate, but the reality is that peace comes as a resolution of war. And we've fought two major global battles, World War I and World War II. I'm standing here in front of Pyramid Mountain. It's right behind me. The Victoria Cross mountain range has within itself 19 mountain peaks. It covers 678 square kilometers. The east side of that begins just on the east side of Pyramid Mountain. I'm standing here in front of Mount Robson. This mountain is 3,954 meters above sea level, or 12,972 feet. It is the absolute highest mountain in the Canadian Rocky Mountain chain. Folks, when we talk about the Victoria Cross Mountain Range, just so that we all are clear, it ends on the east side of this mountain. Alberta was the first province to name lakes and mountains after its decorated soldiers. The province felt that recipients of the Victoria Cross would be the most suitable to be honored, as this award is the highest military decoration that can be bestowed upon a soldier in the British Commonwealth. In 1949, Mount DeWind and Mount Harvey were the first mountains named to honor recipients of the Victoria Cross, Edmund DeWind and Frederick Harvey. These mountains are north of Jasper in the Wilmore Wilderness Park. In 1951, five mountain peaks in Jasper National Park were named after the Victoria Cross recipients. Today, I'd like to introduce you to these courageous men and their mountains. Mount Kerr is named for John Chipman Kerr, who homesteaded in the Spirit River with his brother Roland. When war broke out, the brothers traveled to Edmonton to enlist, leaving a brief note tacked to their front door. It said, War is hell, but what is homesteading? I would like to pay tribute to Private John Kerr. Folks on the front lines, he knew that our allies were running out of bombardment. And so he took it upon himself to charge the enemy lines and at point blank range opened up fire. The enemy thinking they were surrounded surrendered to him. 62 prisoners were taken and 250 yards of enemy trench captured. You know, just before this man charged those front lines, one of his fingers was blown off by a bomb. Along with two other men, he escorted the prisoners under fire and then reported for duty before having his wound dressed. After the war was over, Private Kerr returned to Alberta and resumed farming. He also served in the oil fields and was a forest ranger in that process. Folks, his Victoria Cross is honored by its presence in the War Museum. Mount Kinross is named for Cecil John Kinross, who was born in England and immigrated to Canada at age 16 to farm in rural Alberta. Private Kinross' citation for valor is for exemplary conduct during the Battle of Passchendaele. Private Cecil Kinross, on the front lines, under heavy fire, in broad daylight, he knew they had to charge forward. He took off all of his gear, with the exceptions 
of his firearm and ammunition. And with that only, he charged across open territory towards the enemy and engaged them at point blank range. He charged the German machine gun. He killed a crew of six and destroyed the machine gun. Inspired by his action, his company advanced 300 meters and established an important new position. Private Kinross was honorably discharged and returned to Lougheed, Alberta, where he lived until his death in June of 1957. That honorable Victoria Cross that he received to this day remains with his family. Mount McKean is named for George Burden McKean, who also immigrated from England to farm with family near Lethbridge, Alberta. McKean was an assistant minister to his church and organized the first local Boy Scout troop. George Burden McKean, being a small man of 120 pounds, topping in at five foot six, had to try on three different occasions to enlist and was finally accepted in Edmonton. In April of 1918, while stationed near Gavrel, France, Lieutenant McKean led his troops in a raid against the German forces. When McKean's men hesitated, he dove over top of a barbed wire fence and then ran along a trench. This inspired confidence in his unit, who quickly followed to seize the trench and capture its remaining soldiers. After the war, he remained in England, but did not have a happy end. In 1926, folks, when he was operating a sawmill in England, part of the blade came apart, and that piece embedded in his skull, and that was the end of this fine young man. His medals and a portrait of him today are in the War Museum in Ottawa, Ontario. Mount Patterson is named for John George Patterson, who moved from England to Calgary with his wife and four children in 1906. At age 40, he enlisted in the 50th Infantry Battalion. In April 1917, at Vimy Ridge, his battalion advanced towards the German occupied territory when they were confronted with heavy machine gun fire. John Patterson, being on the front lines, charged ahead from foxhole to foxhole until he was right in front of the enemy where he started engaging them. Under heavy gunfire, this man charged forward. He threw hand grenades killing and destroying many of the enemy. And then he charged forward, bayoneting the remainder of those that were firing on his people. A few weeks later, Private Patterson was killed in action during an attack on German occupied power station in France. In addition to this mountain up here in the Victoria Cross mountain range, the city of Calgary named a bridge in his honor. That bridge spans the Elbow River. Mount Zengo is named for Raphael Louis Zengo, who moved from the United States to Saskatchewan with his mother when he was a young child. Raphael Zengo. He was in a troop advancing towards the front line of the enemy combatants. He noticed that there was a hole forming in their line under the fire of the German machine guns. Seeing the destruction that was occurring to his line, he ran ahead by 200 yards and he engaged the enemy right up front and destroyed them and the machine gun. Shortly afterwards, he was knocked unconscious for a few minutes by an enemy shell. But on regaining consciousness, he immediately continued to direct fire at the enemy. After the war, he became a longtime resident of Rocky Mountain House, Alberta, branch number eight of the Royal Canadian Legion in Rocky Mountain House is named in his memory. The tribute to these five soldiers in 1951 
was made possible by the cooperation of federal and provincial governments. And in 1952, the Victoria Cross Mountain Range was recognized as an eternal monument to all Canadian recipients of the Victoria Cross. You know, folks, it doesn't matter in what area that you are in the service of your fellow human beings, but when you're doing that, truly, you are in the service of your God. And I want to take this time and opportunity to thank you for that service. I also want to pay a special tribute to those five people from Alberta who received that Victoria Cross. In addition, in total, in our global conflicts, 99 of these awards have been issued to Canadian soldiers. We thank you. We thank you from the bottoms of our very heart. And we hope and pray that you and all of your descendants will be blessed for many, many years to come. Thank you for your service. Stay safe, be well, and I'll see you in the mountains. This land.